South Korea carried out a live-fire drill as a show of force in response to North Korea's latest missile launch. A spokesman for South Korea's Korean President Moon Jae said the country's military has been ordered to prepare a stern measure that can counter North Korea's increasing nuclear and military threats. Foreign Affairs Minister Christian Freeland issued a statement in response saying Canada is gravely concerned by the escalating aggressive behavior demonstrated by North Korea's leadership. We condemn in the strongest terms North Korea's launch of a ballistic missile over Japan, a deliberate and reckless action intended to provoke and threaten regional and global security. The launch came just hours after a parliamentary committee here in Ottawa heard that American policy is not to protect Canadian territory with their ballistic missile defense system, shattering a long-held Canadian political assumption that the U.S. would intervene. How far is the North willing to go, and can U.N. sanctions bring them back into line? Marius Grenius is here with us, and he is a fellow at the Canadian Global Affairs Institute, an expert on the Koreas as a former ambassador to both the South and the North, uh, something we don't have anymore. You've been inside uh, yes. North Korea. You, you know the mindset a bit. What do you think they're doing here with the multiple launches that, that really seems to be dangerous brinksmanship? Well, I would have to say that I do not know the mindset. I don't think anybody as an outsider really knows what's going on. But I think we all have our theories, perhaps. But in terms of this latest uh, missile uh, launch, the it's just another step. Uh, from a North Korean point of view, it's another step, progressive step towards uh, making sure that uh, they can have a full uh, viable nuclear weapon arsenal. Uh, for the re most of the rest of the world, I think it's uh, another step uh, downward. Uh, it's all, I believe, uh, in the context of regime survival. And uh, certainly there seems to be an acceleration, notwithstanding UN sanctions, which quite frankly do not work, um, uh, the acceleration is to make sure that uh, they have everything in place, uh, the viable nuclear arsenal, uh, before anything else changes. When well, everyone says, you know, sanctions, diplomacy, <clears throat> is there really anything that can convince North Korea to give up the nuclear weapons that many think they see as, as essential for their regime survival? Well, you, you said it, central to their regime survival. That's their perception, I believe. And I think we've gone or the, too far uh, in, in, the, in the context of their own development of the weapons uh, that they would ever say, OK, we will now stop and uh, we will get rid of them. It's just not going to happen. What I believe has to occur next is an honest uh, conversation among the primary players, uh, China, uh, United States, South Korea, to a certain extent Russia, in terms of that what's going to happen when we have this new security equilibrium in a nuclear North Korea. And that conversation has to be an honest one to think about the, the future of uh, the, the Korean Peninsula. Yesterday, we heard at this parliamentary committee from some foreign affairs officials who said North Korea doesn't necessarily see Canada as a foe. They're, they see us as kind of friendly. That surprised a lot of people. <laughs> Did you get the sense that North Korea might listen to Canada or, or might not target Canada or that they see us as a friend? Well, <laughs> I, I was equally surprised. I thought um, that um, getting reassurance from those wonderful <laughs> North Korean uh, buddies, best friends, is not necessarily something that uh, one would uh, accept, except with a, perhaps a huge grain of salt. It, um, we did have, of course, uh, Prime Minister Trudeau's security advisor in Pyongyang to plead for the release of Pastor Lim who's now back in Canada. And I would hope that uh, the Trudeau uh, government would uh, think through what, what Canada can do or could do, because quite frankly, it's been a non-player. It's been no marginalized since uh, Prime Minister Harper's decision for controlled engagement, which was essentially no engagement with North Korea. So I guess the last question would be two parts. Number one, obviously, you seem to think we, we should reestablish at least credentials in North Korea diplomatically. And, and the second part of that, what would that allow us to do or what role could we serve? Well, 
it, um, Canada will always be a modest um, player in uh, in the context of North uh, Northeastern, uh, North Asian, Northeast Asian. Um, politics and security, but I certainly found during my trips uh, to Pyongyang, of which I, I, I was there four times, that you need to see for yourself what's going on. You cannot rely on others to inform you in nice memos or whatever to uh, to tell you what's going on. You have to be there on, on right there. Secondly, it's important, I believe, to do the messaging at a senior level from Canada to the senior level in, uh, in Pyongyang. And uh, that means r regular, regular conversations to, to find out what's going on and to be able to figure out, I think, in, um, uh, especially in terms of consultations with uh, our South Korean friends, what Canada could uh, do. Right now, uh, lots of rhetoric, lots of nice uh, statements out of, uh, out of uh, the government, but uh, that's just not good enough. Okay. Marius, thank you so much for joining us with your expertise. My pleasure.